Hello, trading has closed on December 28th, 2021. We always begin with our disclaimer, so let us do that. It's my trading plan for tomorrow, December 29th. Please trade at your own risk because my calls can be completely wrong. We said yesterday's pattern was a positive pattern, low of the day first bar, high of day in the last bar. We said it should lead to higher prices, which it did. Call for the pattern, which is, which was the one with the early high. There it is. Tomorrow also has the early high. This pattern either rallies with a high into the close or drops in a straight line. Neither one of those things happen. What counts isn't today's close, but tomorrow's open. So we're anticipating a pretty big gap at tomorrow's open, either strongly higher, ideally taking out this high, or a straight line drop. Now futures are up as I'm recording this. Nothing stops us from gapping up over this high and the rally continue. But if we don't, it's a negative pattern, because if this pattern does not close, near its high, it does tend to have the straight line drop. We also gapped up, hit a higher high, and closed under all these highs. So either you take this high out early or we should see lower prices regardless of how we close. During the day we got a sell signal but also had a higher target. The higher target printed first, MJT said it was false, and we satisfied the sell signal. Well, here's the daily chart. Here's the old high. This is a challenge of the old high. Typically, when you run up to but not through the old high in a straight line, usually you use up too much energy to do that, and the challenge of the old high fails. Typically, when the old high fails, you stop short of the old high. That's what usually happens. Sometimes you have something called a 2B top, where you go past the old high and then promptly reverse down. That hasn't happened yet. And we said yesterday the only thing that would, that would um, keep my longer term count alive would be if that did happen. And while it hasn't happened yet, it still is in play. If this was the all-time high, and counting A down, we now have an ABC. C and A have a nice fib relationship. Now, of course, if we gap up and take this out, that's uh, that is killed, and that's what if you that's what you have to do if you're a bull. But if this holds, and if we start down, don't forget, we're anticipating either moving up sharply or down sharply tomorrow. If we start down, it is a logical place for the rally to end. Doesn't mean it'll happen, but at least it keeps. The bear's hopes alive. If you're a bull, what you really have to do is take this out early, or we could move straight down. And if we do move straight down, there's more trouble of brewing. Because that's a reversal bar involving the upper Bollinger Band. Now, if this high falls, it's no longer a reversal bar. But if we do start down, the target's a challenge of the lower band, and that's way back in the 4500s. The band's going to move, but still there's a ways down if we do have the drop down. Now, tomorrow's pattern has a really high. We could still gap down, even though futures are up. Today's pattern should rally in the close or have a straight line drop. Neither happen. So we should gap smartly at tomorrow's open to satisfy the pattern at the last acceptable time.
Thus, tomorrow's open can substitute for today's close. Futures are up, I think, eight or nine points as I'm recording this. So it's entirely possible we continue higher, overtake today's high quickly, and continue going up. But if we don't take the high a day out promptly, it puts numerous sell signals into play. Failure of the pattern to close near its high is bearish. We gapped up at a higher high close under the intraday highs. NASDAQ McClellan oscillator reversed from over its upper Bollinger Band. Unless that's reversed promptly, it gives a sell. We hit a new all-time high and closed in the red. That gets reversed promptly if it's a sell. We hit a square of nine resistance area. This whole thing started from 666.79. You can add either a whole number or a half number. Square it and you get within half a point of today's high. This is close enough, a hundredth of a point, because if we were like a half handle under this, but have hit this exactly. So with the lines on the square of nine, there is a valid wave count compatible with the high day holding. There's a reversal bar involved in the upper Bollinger Band. Bulls need to clear today's high promptly, ideally by gapping over it for the rally to continue. This is not the time of the year to look for a high being made, but in the world of technical analysis, it remains possible to count the November high as the actual high, and today's high as the retest of that high. Don't forget, not every, not every um, index hit a new high when SPX did. So for now, at least, we have divergence at the high. This retest either succeeds or fails and we should find out fairly soon which happens. So we're going up. We've cleared numerous hurdles. We're up about eight or nine handles in futures. It's not a lot more to clear this. You continue going up. But the alternative, as I see it, is to move down sharply. And if we do move down sharply, it puts all those other sell signals we mentioned into play. So I think uh, tomorrow's open is going to be critical. still hoping against hope this thing holds out. But if we just continue higher, we have to throw in the towel. But if this is an expanded flat, it doesn't really change anything. It's just an unsuccessful challenge of the old high. And the challenge can be under the old high or over it, as long as it gets rejected promptly. And rejecting it promptly had the first step today. But so far, it's not enough. You have to keep going down. So we'll see how we open tomorrow, and that'll clarify the picture. And that's today's call.